automation's not about becoming a programmer. And it's so interesting because we're in the DevEd zone at Cisco Live, and DevEd is all about teaching people how to do automation through programmability, programmable interfaces. So for me to say that out loud, I'm, like, I'm sorry, Jeff, what are, you, what are you talking about? But it's why I'm so excited that you're here today, Dexter, because what you've been doing at Meraki and your team has been working on really does drive that home that what we've been hoping people would understand from what we're doing um, is learning to automate something isn't about learning to code. Right. That one might fit within the other, but what we're really trying to do, and I think you've done it, you have a great story about what your organization's been doing is, we're, we're trying for our, organ, our businesses to solve complex problems and abstract away the things we have to repeat every day so we can use our actual skills and experience to say, how do I solve more complex problems now that I've put aside the repetitive stuff? So can you talk to us a little bit about the story that you and your company have gone through and the evolution you have and why you even went on that journey? Sure, yeah, happy to do so. So my company has made a significant Meraki investment as part of our hardware refresh cycle. Uh, this was going from 2019 uh, all the way to 2022, right? So for us to go down the journey of network automation, we've had to climb a lot of mountains, really. Like we've had to transform our organization from network engineering to software engineering, uh, follow a lot of imperative programming practices things along that nature. And this is a path that other customers can go down, but there is an alternative that makes it easier, right? Where you don't have to be a software engineer in order to achieve network, uh, sorry, network automation. So what that looks like now is a declarative uh, paradigm, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I like to give a sports analogy around this. Um, you can think of uh, automation as being like uh, the team on the field playing, right? And the coach's job is to come up with the playbooks, the run books, the step-by-step -step instructions for uh, how to play the game, right? And if you're doing imperative automation, you're the coach. You have to come up with every single executional step, you know, using imperative automation paradigms. Um, with declarative automation, you actually become the GM, right? You just make sure the team has the resources it needs to be successful. So you're just managing uh, the resources. Mm -hmm. And in this case, Terraform is going to be your coach. And it'll be a very good coach, too. Uh, so it's about abstracting the software engineering and the API calls from the desired state of uh, what you're intending to automate. I, you know, I can really appreciate that for a lot of reasons. One in particular is, so often when I talk to classic network engineers, and like you, my journey coming up before I joined DevNet here at Cisco, or even Cisco in general, was network engineering. I, I taught the Cisco Networking Academy way back in the, you know, the early 2000s. I was a CCNA, CCNP. I mean, that's what I did for a living. Um, over time, though, you start to realize, or at least I started to notice that you mentioned the word declarative. It's when you, your first, the first thought we tend to have is that we have to write some code to get to a place. I never wanted to be a comp sci major. I never wanted to learn. I never thought that it was anything more than I've got to sit in front of a screen and write a bunch of lines of code. You start to realize, though, when you spend more time with it, it's much more about outcomes. It's more, much more about what we can do. And I think, at least for me, and I'm hoping more people can see, like your organization did, that the declarative nature of tools like Terraform allow you to say, rather than implying everything you want and building it from scratch, sometimes templatizing, but just repeating that, you get to use a tool that you basically get to say in almost human language, I want you to go do it this way. And then it can just do that for you. And I don't have to know all the code and all the ins and outs of it. So it's far less about becoming a programmer, so to speak, and much more about taking the skills I have and the tools available to me and saying, this is what I want the outcome to look like. So for Starbucks, as an example, when you when you are all looking at how do we not just reform what we do technology-wise in, in each location, how did Meraki and the declarative nature of Terraform and these things, how did it all go together to actually solve problems in each store location? Because I've got to imagine that's far more important than we got some really cool new shiny boxes in the ceiling. We love them, but there's, there's got to be more to it than just that. Yeah, so really it's, it was about the journey for us of our hardware life cycle, right? So we needed to provision our brand new network equipment in the store. So it's that initial provisioning piece, which is kind of the start and catalyst, rather, of our uh, automation journey, right? So you imagine like each device has hundreds of configuration elements, and we have thousands of sites, you know? So <laughs> it, it takes a long time to configure yeah. them. So be, doing it manually was not an option for us. So. Um, we really needed to rely on automation in order to be successful for that initial provisioning uh, process. And that's where we really developed our network provisioning product uh, for the initial uh, rollout of the Meraki mm -hmm. fleet. 
It's when we got into day two operations and other such use cases like uh, firmware maintenance or ma managing firewall rules at scale, uh, that's where our imperative automation strategy really started to fall apart and we needed to transition to something more declarative. So uh, my organization decided to invest in actually making a open source Terraform Meraki provider uh, so that our network engineering arm could leverage that rather than trying to uh, create more and more different imperative products uh, for these individual use cases that often have like overlapping uh, functionality mm -hmm. and also can have um, different support models, right? So by having a single declarative framework, uh, we can all work and uh, have a clear escalation path, right? So from the day-to-day -day operations team to the network engineering team to the uh, software engineering team, uh, we can escalate things as appropriate mm -hmm. and have very clear demarcations around what the roles and responsibilities are. And we don't require network engineers to change their job, kind of like how I had to do, in order to be uh, successful in this space. So that's what's really exciting about declarative automation, is uh, you can essentially allow your network engineering staff to be successful without requiring them to change roles. Right. You know what, I find it um, really inspiring, very motivating, I think, for a lot of folks that by going down this path, it, it reinforces uh, what we hear a lot from internally at Cisco from Meraki and how Meraki thinks about what they offer to customers and to partners is far less about the boxes and the interfaces and all of that type of stuff and much more about Meraki as a platform. Yes, we have APs and we have firewalls and cameras and that's all, well again, those are all necessary. But overall, Meraki is a platform that you can do this sort of thing on top of where you can say, the dashboard physically exists, but that's not always the right answer for you. The, the various API endpoints that exist allow you to build exactly what you're describing so that for your environment, you can take advantage of this platform to build what you need to solve your problem. So it's you're not locked into a box, and the idea of being more declarative about what you want done becomes real, and it becomes far easier than it's ever been before. So, Absolutely. The idea that you can take network configuration management problems and transform them into document management solutions is really exciting because, again, prior to your earlier comments, you can do versioning, templating, you can do sub-templating, mm -hmm. and you can make that about the business logic as much as possible, whereas like Terraform uh, just relies on the Meraki APIs to perform all the ex uh, execution logic. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what's really compelling about this. As we kind of wrap up, you have your organization, you and your team have created some really, a really great open source project here that I think others can take advantage of. As a matter of fact, all those others are right behind me right now here in the DevNet Zone. So if they were standing here, what would you just say to them? Like, how can they, how can they jump in and lend a hand and take advantage of what you're, you've already done? If you're a network engineer, please leverage this uh, Terraform provider. Mm -hmm. uh, try it out, let us know how it works for you. Give us suggestions, uh, improvements. We would love to get feedback from the community. The, the biggest thing that we can really get is feedback and understanding how we can make this better uh, for everyone to use. If you're a developer and you want to be part of an open source community, uh, then we would encourage you to contribute to the project. Uh, you know, We have contribution documents that we would love to uh, provide to those interested in learning a, Golang, and B, like declarative automation paradigms. So, That's fantastic. Yeah. Dexter, thank you for being here. I think this, you said it best. Community contribution, that is why we're all here. All of this exists because of our community. So thank Absolutely. you for being here. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate the opportunity.